Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Now, the Great Firewall is the nickname for China's Golden Shield project, which is designed to monitor and control China's 500 million internet users. So, China's internet is full of censorship, but it's also increasingly evident that it's full of hackers as well. Some of whom may be linked to China's military. Now, today our guests argued that the issues of censorship and the issues of hacking should actually be looked at as two sides of the same coin. Jason Ma and Chen Jifei, thank you for joining us today. So, you know, there's been a lot of attention paid recently to the hacking issue. Most recently, there was a, a, a article in Bloomberg Business Week about, uh, you know, tracking down one particular Chinese hacker. Um, was there anything that we learned from this? You think that people didn't know before? Yeah, at the end of the article, people admit like uh, so much effort would take just hacking, kind of find the one guy. And uh, in this whole big machine, and this guy is a professor in a military university, and it's just confirmed what people said before. But uh, how many confer you have? This is kind of very passive, kind of defensive, kind of way to deal with this issue. Everyone knows that's a national behavior. Chinese government is behind it. They, well, they, they deny it. I mean, of course they deny it. I mean, they can say, "Oh, I did it." So, so what? I mean, they definitely deny it. But, uh, but for the Western world. Definitely, this is not a solution. I mean, you review one guy, they have 1,000 or 3,000 or 100,000 another guy. So, so there's no way for this to do all kind of solve the problem. This so is too yeah, defensive. I understand from the American legal standpoint, you are, you are innocent until proven guilty. So if you, under that kind of, you follow that kind of principle or precept, China is still innocent because it's very hard or even impossible uh, to well, build up enough. Well, one thing the, 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 the internet expert was saying that, the hacking expert was saying that it would take you years to build up enough proof to show that this is like a, a systematic thing that's, that's happening. Right. And so, so I guess by this kind of thing, it's just kind of make sure people understand that that's uh, true, that's Chinese government and the military is behind it. But uh, it's not a solution. The solution should be stronger thing, like, uh, like uh, I think it should be offensive. So I, mean, I want to uh, let's just talk about Jason yeah. the football fan of <laughs> NFL. <laughs> so you're going to talk offense. Huh? Yeah. So I mean, let's talk about on the other hand the internet censorship. Like a lot of people, you know, now the hacking is a big deal. Like every it seems like. All the cool kids are getting hacked. Uh, Facebook recently announced they're getting hacked as well. But like, there's not that much attention paid in the West to the issue of the internet control in China. But it's getting worse, isn't it? Right, right. I mean, they, they kind of, they, they're kind of not skill, just kind of uh, go number one to the world. I mean, they control the internet to the point where almost, I mean, I post a, a blog which is just have a little bit of kind of sensitive information, they immediately will remove it. And they use unlimited human resource and the new technology to do it. Every year they invest billions of RMB on this. So, so they are improving their technology every day. But this is the place where I'm talking about offense. I mean, of course, because of the moral standard Western world have, because of law we have, we cannot counter by hacking Chinese website. What we can do, we go for the right thing to do. We bring down, we tear down their internet censorship. I mean, by doing this, uh, they, we, we can gain a lot. I think there are the two uh, kind of benefits that come with it. First is, uh, by doing this, you will keep those people who would otherwise ha hack into American systems busy. So they have to watch over their they domestic are people. I mean, uh, people. They are yeah, the, the same group people yeah. doing this. So uh, you're saying that people who are hacking into foreign companies, into U.S. companies, into the U.S. government? They're under the same umbrella inside the Chinese. If you system. read a Business Week article uh, more closely, uh, this guy, the protagonist, uh, Zhang Changhe, right, yeah. w was a professor at a China's National Defense Information Engineering University, which is affiliated with PLA. And he was also referred as one member of the Beijing group, which was labeled by the expert here to counter the hacking activity from China. So this guy both hacked uh, American system as well as infiltrating into in individual mailboxes of Chinese citizens. So we're talking about one system, one setup that both uh, you know, uh, control the information flow in China and uh, violating the rights of the uh, overseas citizens. So what, to continue what I wanted to add on to what Jason said, if you American launch an offensive, that is to help Chinese people tear down their firewall, to help 
uh, software here, software engineer here, develop more effective ways to break the internet uh, censorship. Then what we're going to see, first of all, is those people will be kept busy. Ms. Zhang Changhe will be confined to local domestic activities. Secondly, uh, uh, experts here would have more evidence, much more data right. to track down their whereabouts. It would be much easier to track down them. America would, American government uh, would be much easier to build up that case that uh, Chinese government is engaged in a cyber war against the United States. Right. I mean, I'm talking about uh, hacking outside China and uh, controlling inside China is the one, two sides of one coin. It's because really that's the case. I remember in 2011 when Google saying Chinese government is hacking their Gmail system, most of the target mailbox are those dissident target mailbox. And at this time, New York Times claim Chinese government hacking them because they want to find out who released information to them about Wen Jiamao's family kind of wealth. So, so I guess for a lot of kind of people here, they didn't realize a lot of hacking indeed is part of the information control inside. It's extension of kind of information control inside China to outside China. And hacking is for the purpose to better doing their inside control. And I still remember there is a uh, kind of a Chinese news showing a military research institute have a, a soft developed a software. They are brag like, oh, we have a new research kind of product. The, the, the product is basically hacking attack a Falun Gong website outside China. And basically Falun Gong is what they are controlling inside China. So, so and also from another perspective, Every Chinese people, including foreign company inside China, is hacked every day because their information is controlled, is monitored every day. So, so I guess from this standard, it's a reasonable and righteous offense to go for their internet blockage and censorship. So you're saying basically the U.S. should um, help Chinese people jump the firewall to access the, the internet they can't do. Right, right that will gain popularity for Chinese kind of uh, the U.S. government because, uh, you know, recently there is a kind of uh, one guy, his name is, he's president of uh, a big university in China, his name is Feng Binxing, and he is a kind of a, uh, supposed to be the father of Chinese com kind of com the internet control. He created a golden shell. So he's the father of the yeah. firewall. firewall. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. when he and kind of uh, was so hated in China. He kind of uh, have one kind of a Twitter, like in China, uh, Weibo, and just kind of saying Happy New Year, something like that. And the response is the tens of thousands of people just saying the most kind of dirty word in China. I mean, go the, hike. Go yeah, go take, hike. take a hike, <laughs> right? Hike, but but a, like a, a not nice way of saying no, take same a hike. Like, yeah. right. So if America really at uh, it takes the fight to the home court of, of China, they will win people's heart in China. So this is a really interesting argument you're making because basically uh, I think there's increasing acknowledgement uh, by the U.S. government that this is a national issue. You mm -hmm. know, Obama mentioned, President Obama mentioned the issue of the hacking in the State of the Union address. There was a national intelligence estimate release that, you know, called China like one of the biggest perpetrators of cyber espionage, basically the biggest perpetrator of cyber espionage. But the things that they're suggesting the U.S can do. You know, analysts are saying, you know, they can lodge formal p protests, they can expel diplomatic personnel, you know, you can travel restrictions, visa restrictions, complain to the World Trade Organization. This is kind of about foreign, like, you know, U.S. companies being targeted. So, like, the U.S. government can do that kind of stuff. What you're suggesting is really something completely different. I mean, it's too, too defensive. I mean, just like saying, please don't beat me, please don't beat me. I mean, you can't stop a bullying kind of guy from beating you by saying, please don't beat Except me. Except for the last part, where uh, you, uh, you restrict a visa, uh, impose some visa restrictions on those people who contributed Chinese effort in controlling information, in, in controlling internet access, uh, including the guy who, uh, Jason just mentioned, Mr. But there are 10,000 another kind of Zhang Changjiang over there. I mean, you can't find out every one of them. Uh, that's true, that's true. And I think, uh, according to the Pentagon, the cyber war would be definitely the better ground if there were ever a war between the United States and China. And then the United States took such a very passive approach. I think probably out of uh, concerns for the commercial interests or whatever, but if you look at how business was done in China, 
uh, uh, which increasingly rely on internet access because you are offshoring, right? You are, <coughs> excuse me, operating overseas. And the internet infrastructure was largely uh, sort of uh, diminished in its function because of this information control. We're looking at companies were forced to locate, relocate to elsewhere, their headquarters from China to elsewhere because of the low speed of internet. There was a report that shows that uh, as developed as the Chinese internet system is on surface. You mentioned there were 530 million people. But the internet speed, if you rank it around the world, China would have a dismal performance at 97. And even Malaysia, a much backward country in that regard, had a rank of 71. So let's talk about, you know, you mentioned earlier that the Chinese people, they don't like the firewall. They would welcome, you know, help. But, um, you know, can the U U.S. go in and just kind of unilaterally you know, no, not you. I mean, you, Chinese is unilaterally hacking your computer everywhere. I mean, they didn't really ask you, can I do that? So, so what the U.S. is doing is he just kind of provided necessary help to promote information freedom. So, which is the fundamental kind of thing Chinese U.S. government is claiming they are doing? Uh, I the agree that because if you look at internet, it's uh, borderless. It's very loosely held infrastructure that is not governed by any national law or international law, so, so to speak. Right. There are some very vague, wordy the policy or etiquette about it. So the best uh, uh, the United States can do now is within this framework, uh, given this kind of system, they would do something that nobody would frown upon. That is, if you do that against us, then we would just help people uh, free the potential uh, or the, the power of the internet that nobody can say no. But on, at the same time, the, you know, the government's grip, the Chinese government's grip on internet right or information flow would have to collapse. I think that's a very nice approach. So unfortunately, uh, we're out of time today, so thank you for joining us and, and suggesting this novel way for the U.S. to uh, combat hacking in China. And thank you for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, visit us at ntd.tv.